welcome to Australia. And um, I have a question. Um, sometimes we get in a situation when we're surrounded by people who is, have a very high expectation to, in terms of us. And um, when we cannot fulfill the expectation, you start to feel a very terrible feeling of guilt. And um, it's okay when it's your mother-in-law, you can kind of cope with that. <laughs> but sometimes it's your parents, for example. I, I have no problem. I have nothing against her. I just joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, sometimes it's the people who's very close to you, like your parents, and you cannot really um, fulfill the expectation because you would like to do in your life what you want to do, and obviously it's not what they want. And um, how to cope with that feeling of guilt, and also what do you think, what kind of relationship should be between the parents and the children? Thank you. Uh, that reminds me of something. See, one thing is, it's not just between parents and children, it's just about every relationship, everywhere. People have all kinds of weird expectations. <laughs> it's like this, a lady went to the butcher shop and all this chicken, which were hanging upside down, dressed chicken. Poor chicken, feathers are their dress. You rip it off and say they're dressed <laughs> So she went to this chicken and uh, lifted one leg, smelled, wrinkled her nose, lifted a wing, wrinkled her nose. Like this she was going from chicken to chicken. It was having an effect on the rest of the customers. <laughs> so the butcher saw it's having an effect, so he went and tapped on her shoulder. She turned around. So he asked, Ma'am, can you pass a test like that? <laughs> so a whole lot of people are always <laughs> busy <laughs> putting everybody to tests that they themselves cannot pass. Especially parents, pa parents think all the things that they could not do, they must achieve through their children. So they should have bred racehorses <laughs> I want you to understand this, children are not your property. It's… it's a privilege another life came through you, hmm? You must enjoy it. Do your best to nourish it. What it becomes is not your business. Your business is to support it, create a wonderful atmosphere around it, create an ambience where it grows well. I'm using the word it consciously. Like a tree, like a plant, you just create the nourishment that it needs, it grows. Well, is it going to bear apples, pears, mangoes or just flowers or just nothing? We don't know. Only thing is, your wish is they must grow to their full potential. They are not an extension of your ambitions. They are not and they need not be. So this is because people think they own their children. No, they are not your property. I think these days they are telling you, older generation hesitated to say this, this generation, by the time they're ten, they're telling you, you got no business to tell me what to do <laughs> So does it mean to say you don't say anything to them? No, it's your business to see because if you don't guide them, somebody else will on the street or somebody will do it long distance on the internet, all kinds of creatures are out there <laughs> All right. So yes, to protect them, to nourish them, to allow them to explore their possibilities, it is your business to do that as a parent. But parents' concern may be, what will happen, what will happen, what will happen? I… my dear father, he is ninety-five, uh, <clears throat> he is a physician. 
In his mind, that generation of Indians will understand that. Unless you become a physician, you're no good. So I was no good <laughs> But that was good for me because when you're no good, nobody pays enough attention. That's all I wanted, <laughs> that they leave me alone <laughs> So, I, I'm just saying, you know, he, he's always worried, what will happen to this boy? His concern is this, this boy has no fear in his heart, what will happen? So one day when I was eleven years of age, he said this, you know, I came home with a twelve-foot cobra, he was my friend. And he said, this boy has no fear in his heart, what will happen? Then I asked him, when did fear become a virtue? When did this happen? <laughs> he said, see, I told you he has no fear in his heart. I said, that's fine, but when did fear become a virtue? Why is it like this? Why fear, anger, all these things have become virtues, is it? Tell me when you go through fear, is it fantastic? Hello? <laughs> it's one of the most terrible emotions you can go through. Why are we thinking that we should be fearful of our future, not only of your future, of anything that you do and you are even God-fearing, all right? Fearful about everything, what is the point? There is no such thing. There is no such thing that this generation should be an extension of the previous generation. This generation should do something that previous ge generation could not imagine. That is when there is a purpose to this generation, isn't it? Otherwise, what's the point if you're going to do the same things? Well, if you want to do something that you really want to do, if you think you're going to do it with everybody's approval, I'm sorry, life doesn't happen that way. It is just that whatever the hell you want to do, just do it well. Once there is success, your parents and your uncles and your aunts, everybody says, wonderful. <laughs> All right. They want success, they're only afraid. They have every right to be concerned about you. They have every right because they brought you up. They're concerned whether you will do well or not. They have every right to be concerned. But that concern should not become control. 